Star Wars has existed for so many decades that the franchise now inspires itself. For better or for worse, we universally understand this as fan service. Sometimes Easter eggs. When the ATST first appeared in Mando Season 1, I was excited. When Luke appeared in the Book of Boba Fett, I was thrilled to see one of my favourite characters of all time interacting with Grogu. Grogu. I'm sure this was the same for many of you. Our nostalgia was teased, our childhood memories came flooding back. Our heroes are still with us. I've been a Star Wars fan for over 30 years and personally I have zero issues with fan service. The term often carries some negative connotations, but as long as the story continues to evolve in a compelling manner and develop a character's backstory in a truthful and thrilling way, I'm all in. Venturing further into the reaches of the galaxy, far away from the adventures of Kenobi, Mando and Boba Fett, none of us saw Andor coming to change everything. Let's start with something obvious. Andor is not your typical Star Wars story. It's a show where people get fired and heroes do unspeakable things. During the first few episodes, I'll admit, I wondered when Ahsoka Tano or Bail Organa were going to show up, as if it had been wired into my expectations, but no one did, and the show is much better for it. I hear some people pointing to Saw Gerrera's appearances in the show, but his scenes always serve the story first, and any potential fan service as a secondary potential, as all good cameos do. Andor certainly hits in a completely different way to its predecessors, and yet it never stops feeling like Star Wars. It's certainly a Star Wars show with a riveting story that intertwines with the core story of Star Wars, yet there's no real fan service, except for this. Does that count as fan service? Strangely enough, when the post credit scene unfolded and we caught a glimpse of what Cassian had been building on Narkina 5, I actually felt a jolt through my brain, as if something was out of place for the first time in the entire first season. The Death Star was out of place in a Star Wars story. Did anyone else feel that at the time? Let me know in the comments. All of this raises some very interesting questions for the Star Wars community to debate. Can the creators and writers leave fan service at the door? And do they have to adhere to the strict code of conduct for a Star Wars story to work? What does this all mean exactly for the future of Star Wars, now that Andor has, well, changed everything? Looking ahead to 2023, The Bad Batch, The Mandalorian, Ahsoka and possibly even Skeleton Crew look set to be next on Disney's release schedule. What's certainly going to be interesting is seeing how these shows feel following the release of Andor. When Andor does return for its second season, familiar themes and tones will return. But until then, what effects, if any, will ripple through the writing process of current and new Star Wars shows? Has Andor established a new set of rules? Is the familiar formula of old no longer the best route for telling a Star Wars story? Or is there a galaxy where both approaches can work side by side, harmoniously telling their own incredible Star Wars stories? Whether you enjoyed Andor or not, the show is surely an important positive for the Star Wars fandom. Debating new characters and their moral compass, as opposed to debating whether Luke Skywalker wouldn't do this or that, is a hugely exciting future to look forward to. At the same time, more Luke Skywalker stories? I'm all in. The technology used by Lucasfilm to bring Luke back in the Book of Boba Fett means we can continue to see more of Luke, but his story would always need to evolve. Instead, we can all agree to what we do look forward to, exciting, fresh, mythical, fantastical and emotional stories featuring our favourite characters of old and new. One of the key questions at this time is, can fan service and shows like Andor coexist? Sure they can, but the initial and sluggish viewing figures for Andor may suggest the Star Wars community at large isn't ready to stray too far from the Star Wars pack just yet. I on the other hand love the show. It's a masterpiece in my opinion, with little fan service. On the other hand, I loved Kenobi, which features plenty of fan service. But looking back, The Rise of Skywalker suffered to tell a coherent story due to the overuse of fan service. 
I think we, me included in this, can quite often send Lucasfilm very mixed messages. But have these mixed messages been the eventual catalyst for vastly different shows to be created, such as The Mandalorian and Andor? The future of Star Wars is a delicate balancing act for Disney and Lucasfilm to undertake. The task is made all the more difficult when you consider the franchise's target audience is aged between 5 and 65. One way in which Disney and Lucasfilm could take on this challenge would be to continue creating a breadth of Star Wars stories targeted at different age groups and different mindsets. Perhaps we can't like everything Lucasfilm and Disney make, and that's just fine. Fan service or not, I'm excited for the future of Star Wars. Give me all the... and complex characters you can. I'm interested to know your thoughts on Andor. Did you like the show, or did you find it uninteresting and too different? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave your thoughts and theories for the future of Star Wars in the comments. Hit that like button to support the channel, and may the Force be with you always.